Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, I will be explaining about Basaveshwara and his philosophy. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the notification button to receive notification whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into the video. So as I have told before, today's video is about Basaveshwara. So the heading of today's video is Basaveshwara. And we will learn about his philosophy also. So Basaveshwara was born in 1132 century era at a place called as Bhagewadi. Bhagewadi. So Basaveshwara was born in 1132 century era at Bhagewadi and his parents were Madarasa and Madlambike. Madarasa and Madalambike were his parents and he studied the subjects like Veda, Grammar and Logic at a very young age. He was a very um, uh, scholarly person that he studied Veda, Grammar and Logic at a very young age. At the age of 8, at the age of 8, he removed the sacred thread. He removed the sacred thread at the age of 8 and said that he had Linga Diksha at birth. He said that he had Linga Diksha at his birth and there was no need for Upanayana. No need for Upanayana. So Upanayana uh, is the Upanayana is a ceremony in which they wear, uh, Brahmins wear the sacred thread. But Basaveshwara at the age of 8, he removed the sacred thread telling that he had Linga Diksha. From his birth he had Linga Diksha and that is why there is no need for this Upanayana to remove this, uh, to wear the sacred thread. So, Vasaveshwara was born in 1132 century era, 1132 CE at Bhagewadi. His parents were Madrasa and Madlambike. He studied Veda, Grammar and Logic at a very young age. At the age of, age of 8, he removed the sacred thread and he said that he had Linga Diksha at birth and that is why there was no need for Upanayana. So that was how Basveshwara thought at a very young age. Now he went to Kudala Sangama. For his studies he went to Kudala Sangama. Kudala Sangama. And he studied under um, Jataveda Muni. So he studied or his guru was he studied under Jataveda Muni. So Jataveda Muni was his guru and he studied at Kodala Sangama and he was appointed the minister or he was appointed as the Karanika by Kalachuri king Bijala. That time the king was Kalachuri king, uh, his name was Bijala and Basveshwara was appointed as the Karanika during that time. And he was not influenced, Basveshwara was never influenced by his power. Okay, he was, in a, uh, he was in the position of a minister. Even then he was not influenced by power or he was never influenced by wealth. He was never influenced by power or wealth or worldly life. Nothing influenced him. He carried out his responsibilities through honest services. He was very honest and he carried out his responsibilities through honest services. So that was how the life of Basaveshwara was going. So he studied under Jataveda Muni at Kudala Sangama. Later Kalachuri King Bijala appointed him as Karnika. He was not influenced by power, wealth or worldly life. 
and he carried out his responsibilities through very honest services under the Kalachure king Bijala. He then when he was um, uh, working under Kalachuri king Bijala, he took a vow or he took a promise to remove caste system. He was against caste system. So he took a promise, he took a vow to remove caste system. Again, he wanted to remove blind beliefs in society. Plurality of God. Plurality of God, that is more number of gods. And idol worship. And idol worship. All these things Vasaveshwara was against and he wanted to remove all these from the society. That is, he wanted to remove caste system, blind belief, plurality of God and idol worship. All these existed in that time society and he wanted to remove that. And he travelled across the state to create awareness among the people. So he tried his best, he travelled to create awareness among the people. That is he wanted to make the people understand that all these caste system, blind beliefs, plurality of God, all these were unnecessary and he travelled around the world to create an awareness among the people. And he made it clear that caste system does not have the base of Dharma Shastra. According to Basaveshwara, he made it very clear that caste system does not have any base in Dharma Shastra, no base in Dharma Shastra. That was what he tried to make the people understand. He may, tried to make the people understand that caste system does not have any base in the Dharma Shastra. The next point was he encouraged interdining. He encouraged the concept of interdining. Interdining means people from all caste um, and community will sit together and have food. That time it was not allowed, higher caste were not allowed to sit and eat with lower caste, but Basaveshwara encouraged interdining. He said that all caste together can sit and eat. And he gave Linga Diksha to uh, many lower caste people. So he gave Linga Diksha Linka Diksha to many lower caste people and he gave it uh, to an untouchable that is Nagadeva and lower caste people were considered as untouchables. So he gave Linka Diksha to Nagadeva who was considered to be an uh, untouchable that is he was uh, from the lower caste in the society. So he gave Linka Diksha to him uh, he was considered to be an untouchable and he also accepted his hospitality. Vasaveshwara has accepted the hospitality of Nagadeva. Accepted his hospitality. So he was from a Brahmin family. Even then he accepted the hospitality of a lower caste person Nagadeva and he gave him Linga Diksha. So he took a vow to remove caste system, blind belief and plurality of God and also idol worship. He created awareness among the people. He said that caste system does not have base in Dharma Shastra and he encouraged interdining that is all the caste sitting together and having food. He gave Linga Diksha to Nagadeva who was considered as an untouchable and he accepted Nagadeva's hospitality. So he made people understand that the caste system was not valid in the society. He also other than interdining he also encouraged inter-caste marriage. He also encouraged inter-caste marriages. So interdining he encouraged and also he encouraged inter-caste marriages. And for that purpose what he did he performed the marriage of a Brahmin, his name was Madhuvaya, daughter, a Brahmin Madhuvaya's, Madhuvaya's daughter and another uh, person Harijan, that is Harijan is a lower caste, Harijan Haralaya's son. Both of their marriage 
was performed by Basaveshwara. Basaveshwara under his uh, guidance, the marriage of Brahmin Madhuvaya's daughter and Harijan Haralaya's son was done. So this marriage was an inter-caste marriage. It was a marriage between a Brahmin's daughter and a lower caste person's son. So this was performed by or he encouraged this marriage. Vasveshwara encouraged this marriage. He was also against animal sacrifice. He was also against animal sacrifice. And regarding animal sacrifice, he said that compassion is the base of religion. Any religion, its base is compassion. Compassion is the base of religion. So in such a religion where compassion or um, love towards each other is important, if you kill animals, that is not the base of a religion. So he was against animal sacrifice and he said that compassion is the base of religion. And for that he said, Daya ve dharma da mula vaya. That is, compassion is the base of religion. So that was what Basaveshwara was trying to make the people understand. So he encouraged intercaste marriages and for that purpose he performed the marriage of a Brahmin Madhuvaya's daughter and Harijan Haralaya's son. He was against caste system and he said that compassion is a base of religion that is Daya Vedharmada Mulavaya. That was what was said by uh, Basaveshwara. Now what happened? I already told that he encouraged the marriage of a Brahmin, uh, Brahmin's daughter and a Harijan's son. That is Brahmin Madhuvaya's daughter and Harijan Haralaya's son. This made the orthodox people of the society very upset. The orthodox people, they saw Basaveshwara's work and they were against it. They were against the work of Basaveshwara. Why? Because Basaveshwara was working against caste system, he was trying to bring inter-caste marriage, he was encouraging inter-dining, all these things were not liked by orthodox people and what they did is, they gave a complaint to the king. We all know that Basaveshwara was working under Kalachuri King Bijala, so they gave a complaint to King Bijala. So Bijala was given a complaint and they said that he was using the money from the treasury and spoiling Hinduism. That was the complaint given against Basaveshwara. So now the king what he did, king wanted to please the orthodox people also and for that the king what he did, he gave death sentence that is death sentence punishment to Madhuvaya, Madhuvaya and Haralaya, Haralaya, that is uh, Madhuvaya's daughter was married to Haralaya's son. So for doing that and for pleasing the orthodox people, Vijala gave death sentence to Madhuvaya and Haralaya. Again one more thing was that the newly wedded couple, that is the newly married couple, they were blinded. They were also punished by bl making them blind. So these was, this was the punishment given to uh, the people who, who was supporting the inter-caste marriage. So Basaveshwara did that but the punishment was given to Madhuvaya and Haralaya for allowing their daughter and son to get married and also the newly wedded couple were also blinded. This made Basaveshwara very upset because he only encouraged their marriage and they got such a severe punishment. So Basaveshwara became very upset with this and he became very upset and he gave up his post as a minister, gave up his post. He gave up his post as a minister and he again went to Kudala Sangama. So the orthodox people were against the work of Basaveshwara. They gave a complaint to Bijala and to please the orthodox people, Bijala gave death sentence to Madhuvaya and Haralaya and the newly wedded couple were blinded. 
and Basaveshwara was very upset with this and he gave up the post of minister and he went to Kodala Sangama. And this incident led to a revolt at Kalyana. This incident started a revolt at Kalyana. And Bijala was murdered in this revolt. So for his action Bijala was murdered in this revolt. Basaveshwara went to Kudala Sangama and Basaveshwara attained Basaveshwara. He attained oneness with God oneness with God that is he passed away in 1168 CE. So he attained oneness with God at 1168 CE at Kodala Sangama. He was in Kodala Sangama and there only he attained oneness with God. So uh, the incident created a revolt at Kalyana. In that revolt Bijala was murdered and Basveshwara attained oneness in God in 1068 CE at Kodala Sangama. So this was about the life of Basaveshwara. So now let us just revise the points which we have studied till now. Basaveshwara, he was born in 1132 CE at Bhagewadi. His parents were Madrasa and Madlambike. He studied Veda, Grammar and Logic at a very young age. He removed his sacred thread at the age of 8 and said that he had Linga Diksha at his birth and there was no need for Upanayana. He went to Kudala Sangama and he studied under Jata Veda Muni. He was appointed as Karanika by the Kalachuri king Bijala. He was not influenced by power, wealth and worldly life. He carried out his responsibilities through honest services. He took a vow to remove caste system, blind belief, plurality of God and idol worship which were practiced in those days. He traveled across the state and created awareness among the people. He made it clear that caste system does not have the base of Dharma Shastra. He encouraged interdining and gave Linga Diksha to untouchable Nagadeva and accepted his hospitality. He encouraged intercaste marriage and performed the marriage of Brahmin Madhuvaya's daughter and Harijan Haralaya's son. He prevented animal sacrifice and said, Dayave Dharmada Mulavaya, compassion is the base of religion. Orthodox people who saw the religious works of Basaveshwara gave a complaint to Bijala that he was using the money from the treasury and he was spoiling Hinduism. To please the Orthodox people, Bijala gave death sentence to Madhuvaya and Haralaya. The newly wedded couple were also blinded. Basveshwara was upset by this and he gave up the post as minister and went to Kudala Sangama. This led to a revolt at Kalyana. Bijala was murdered in this revolt. Basveshwara attained oneness in God in 1168 CE at Kudala Sangama. So this was about the life of Basaveshwara. Now let us see his philosophy. His philosophy is called as Shakti Vishishtadvaita philosophy. So the philosophy of Vasaveshwara is called as Shakti Vishishtadvaita philosophy. So his ideology was he gave prominence to the worship of Linga. That is, Vasaveshwara gave importance to the worship of Linga. That was his first concept, worship of Linga. And he gave opportunity for all. So he gave a chance or he gave opportunity for all to wear Ishtalinga. Ishtalinga and that too irrespective of caste and gender people from any caste irrespective of caste and gender man or woman anyone can wear Ishtalinga that was what was said by Basaveshwara he gave opportunity for all to wear Ishtalinga irrespective of their caste and gender and all those who wore uh, the Ishtalinga came to be called as Lingayata. 
ಲಿಂಗಾಯತ ಲಿಂಗಾಯತ್ ಓಕೆ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ವೋರ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಲಿಂಗ ಕೇಮ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಲಿಂಗಾಯತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಿವ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಗೇವ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಿಂಗ ಇನ್ ದಿ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಶಿವ ದ ಲಿಂಗ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಗ ಆರ್ ಟೂ ಡಿವಿಷನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲಿಂಗ ಗಾಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಗ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಸೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಸೋಲ್ these two are the two divisions when it comes to worship of lord shiva worship of lord shiva there are two divisions that is linga god and anga individual soul so he gave importance to the worship of linga he gave opportunity for all to wear ishta linga irrespective of caste and gender and those who wore linga were called as lingayat and ling uh, in the worship of lord shiva there were two divisions that is linga god and anga which is the individual soul and moksha in his ideology moksha means it is to attain oneness with linga or god that is attain oneness with linga that is god that was what his concept of moksha was the merger of shiva and shakti forms the basis of his philosophy the basis of um, basveshwara's philosophy is the merger of shiva that is purusha and shakti that is prakriti so the merger of purusha prakriti or shiva or shakti can be said as the basis of his philosophy they are incomplete without each other shiva and shakti they are incomplete without each other incomplete without each other that is why their merger is the basis of his philosophy and this ideology is called as shakti vishishta dvaita philosophy this ideology of merger of um shiva and shakti is called as shakti vishishta dvaita philosophy philosophy and that is the philosophy of basaveshwara so according to him moksha means to attain oneness with linga or god and he said about the merger of shiva that is purusha and shakti prakriti and that was a basis of his philosophy he said that they were complete without each other and the, that philosophy is called as shakti vishishta dvaita philosophy and that was the philosophy of basaveshwara now according to him ashtavarna principle has to be followed by lingayats that is ashtavarna principles should be followed by those who wear ishta linga or should be followed by lingayat and this ashtavarna principle will be taught to them at the time of the diksha the when they wear ishta linga they will be taught about the ashtavarna principles now every lingayat have to follow ashtavarna principle ashta means eight so there are eight principles so now let us see one by one the first principle is obedience to guru the principles are very simple the first one is obedience to guru that was the first principle second one worship of linga worship of linga that is the most important concept of his philosophy worship of linga next one reverence to jangama reverence to jangama reverence means basically respect and jangama uh, can be said as either a guru or a priest uh, that is respecting your guru or respecting a, a sanyasi or a priest so guru or we can say priest or a sanyasi so giving respect to guru or priest that is the third principle fourth one is smearing ash on forehead smearing ash on forehead so that is the fourth principle uh, a lingayat should smear ash on his forehead the fifth one 
is wearing of Rudraksha. Wearing of Rudraksha. That is the fifth uh, principle to be followed by Lingayat. Every Lingayat should wear Rudraksha around their neck. Next one, sipping Padotaka. Padodaka. Now what is Padotaka? Padotaka basically um, is holy water. Holy water which they get from, uh, which is uh, basically poured on Ishtalinga or uh, which is poured on a Guru's feet. So basically drinking holy water that is sipping Padotaka, basically sipping of or drinking of holy water. Now the seventh principle is partaking food offered to God, partaking food offered to God. So that is basically from temple uh, you get the food offered to God that is part that is the seventh principle partaking food offered to God and the last one is uttering the Nama Shivaya mantra. Nama Shivaya mantra that is the last uh, principle to be followed by a Lingayat. So, Lingayat have to follow Ashtavarna principle that is 8 principle. One is obedience to Guru, worship of Linga, reverence to Jangama that is respecting Guru or priest, smearing ash on forehead, wearing Rudraksha, sipping Padodaka that is holy water, partaking in food offered to God that is uh, eating of food which is offered to God and last is na uh, uttering Nama Shivaya. So these were the Ashtavarna principles to be followed by uh, uh, Lingayat. And other than this we already studied that he was against caste system. So uh, for that he said that a man's status, a man's status and his uh, uh, is decided by his competency. A man's status is decided by his competency and not by his caste. Competency and not by caste. That was what was said by Basaveshwara. Any man's status is decided by his competency and not by his caste. And he also said that all are equal before Lord Shiva. Everyone are equal before Lord Shiva. That was what was said by Basaveshwara. He condemned, he was against idol worship, holy bath and worship of stones and trees. So he was very much against idol worship. So he was against idol worship, worship of uh, trees, stones, all these things he was against. Worship of trees, stones etc. he was against and for that through his vachanas he tried to make the people understand. So through his vachanas he brought into open the vain display of devotion. So his vachanas were very important uh, to bring the vain uh, or bring the unnecessary display of devotion by the people. So his vachanas it brought into uh, open brought to open the display of or the vain display or the unnecessary display of devotion by the people devotion by the people that is he said some people show their devotion so that other people see so to show that he wrote a lot of vachanas so he said that a man, man's status is decided by his competency not by caste he said all are equal before Shiva. He was against idol worship, worship of trees, stones, etc. And through his vachanas, he brought into open the vain display of devotion by the people. And for that, Basaveshwara wrote a number of vachanas. Uh, he said that the rich build temples. Uh, one of the famous vachana of Basaveshwara is the rich build temples temples. The rich people can build a lot of temple because they have money. But what can I, what can I, a poor man do, a poor man do. 
but a poor person cannot do that so what can i a poor man do the rich can build temples but what can i a poor man do so basaveshwara wrote ullavaru shivalaya maduvaru nanen madli badavanayya so please excuse my pronunciation so the meaning is actually the rich build temples what can i a poor man do so that was one of the important vachana of basaveshwara he also said that work is another form of devotion work is a form of devotion we used to say work is worship so according to basaveshwara work is a form of devotion that is kaya kave kailasa work is a form of devotion that was another vachana of basaveshwara he upheld the dignity of labor and also said that we should inculcate simplicity good character love and sympathy so he gave importance to simplicity so he said that simplicity is important good character is important and he also said love and sympathy all these are important and necessary in today's society for that uh, we should work and he was not supporting any form of caste system he said people's uh, character or competency should be seen by his simplicity good character love and sympathy basaveshwara gave importance to inner purity he said that inner purity of a person is important rather than outer purity so he said inner purity is very important in uh, the person not outer purity so he said that the rich build temple what can a poor man do one of his famous vachana that is ullav rishi wale amaduvaru nanen madli badavanayya then he said that work is a form of devotion kaya kave kailasa and he upheld the dignity of labor and said that we should inculcate simplicity good character love and sympathy he gave importance to inner purity rather than outer purity so all these are the points which we can say about his philosophy that is shakti vishishta advaita so let us see the points basaveshwara propounded this philosophy he gave prominence to the worship of linga he gave opportunity for all to wear ishta linga irrespective of caste and gender all those who wore linga came to be called lingayata in the worship of shiva linga god and anga individual soul are two divisions moksha is to attain oneness with linga the merger of shiva purusha and shakti prakriti forms the basis of his philosophy they are incomplete without the merger of each other this is called shakti vishishta advaita philosophy ashtavarna principle has to be followed by lingayat which are taught at the time of diksha they are obedience to guru worship of linga reverence to jangama smearing of ash on forehead wearing of rudraksha sipping padodaka partaking food offered to god and uttering namah shivaya he propounded the path of devotion for salvation he criticized caste system he said that a man's status is decided by his competency and not by his caste and all are equal before shiva he condemned idol worship holy bath and worship of stones and trees through his vachanas he brought into open the vain display of devotion by the people ullavaru shivalaya maduvaru nanen madli badavanayya the rich build temple but what can i a poor man do he also said that work is another form of devotion kaya kave kailasa he upheld the dignity of labor and also said that we should inculcate simplicity good character love and sympathy basaveshwara gave importance to inner purity rather than outer purity so next we are going to see about the anubhava mantapa anubhava mantapa so basaveshwara established anubhava mantapa at kalyana and this was established to spread his philosophy so so to spread his philosophy he established anubhava mantapa at kalyana 
and this Anubhava Mantapa is also called as Vachana Mantapa. It is also called as Vachana Mantapa. And here religious discourses were held or religious discussions, religious discourses were held and social and religious problems were discussed. Religious discourses, social problems, religious problems etc were discussed in this Anubhava Mantapa. All these things were discussed in Anubhava Mantapa. And uh, the person who presided over the religious discourses were Allama Prabhu. Allama Prabhu was a person who presided the religious discourses at Anubhava Mantapa. There were many other people who participated that is Channa Basava, Channa Basava, Siddharama, Siddharama, Akka Mahadevi, Akka Mahadevi, etc. also participated um, in the uh, religious discourses held at Anubhava Mantapa. And because of this, Kalyana became a cultural center. Because this Anubhava Mantapa was located at Kalyana, Kalyana became a cultural center. So, he established Anubhava Mantapa at Kalyana to spread his philosophy. It was also called as Vachana Mantapa. Uh, the religious discourses were held and social and religious problems were discussed. Allama Prabhu presided over this religious discourses and Channa Basava, Siddharama, Akka Mahadevi etc. were the prominent among those who participated and Kalyana grew into a big cultural center. Now finally let us see about his Vachanas. Vachanas. They are a unique form of Kannada literature. Vachanas are a unique or a special form of Kannada literature. A unique form of Kannada literature and these Vachanas have enriched it. They created and why are Vachanas written? They are written to create awareness. They are written to create, create awareness among the people among the people regarding different matters and it laid the foundation for social reforms. And these vachanas consist of virtues and moral values. Many moral values are given through these vachanas. And Basaveshwara has composed almost 5000 vachanas. 5000 vachanas are said to be composed by Basaveshwara. And his pen name when he write the vachanas his pen name is Kudala Sangama Deva. Kudala Sangama Deva was his pen name. So he wrote the vachanas in the name Kudala Sangama Deva. So vachanas are a unique form of Kannada literature and they created awareness among the people and laid the foundation of social reform. They contain virtues and moral values. Vasaveshwara has composed nearly 5000 vachanas and his pen name is Kodala Sangama Deva. So these are the points related to Vasaveshwara's vachanas. Now let us just see the points. Anubhava Mantapa, he established Anubhava Mantapa at Kalyana to spread his philosophy. This is called as Vachana Mantapa. Religious discourses were held and social and religious problems were discussed here. Allama Prabhu presided over this religious discourses. Channa Basava, Siddharama, Akka Mahadevi etc. were the prominent among those who participated. Kalyana grew into a big cultural center. Vachanas, they are a unique form of Kannada literature and have enriched it. They created awareness among the people and laid the foundation for social reform. They contain virtues and moral values. Pasaveshwara has composed nearly 5000 vachanas. Kudala Sangama Deva was his pen name. So now let us see some important questions from this topic. Which was the birthplace of Pasaveshwara? Bhagavadi. Who was the Kalachuri king who gave royal patronage to Pasaveshwara? Bijala. Who presided over the religious discourses at Anubhava Mantapa? Allama Prabhu. 
When and where was Basaveshwara born? 1132 CE at Bhagavadi. Who were the parents of Basaveshwara, Madrasa and Madhulambike? Who founded Anubhava Mantapa and where? Basaveshwara at Kalyana. Discuss the socio-religious reforms of Basaveshwara. The points are explained in the video. All the points regarding his philosophy and his work you can write in this, write as this answer. So I hope you have understood the topic very clearly. Basaveshwara is a repeated question for your final exam. So if you have any doubts regarding this, you can ask in the comment section. And also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Because your likes and shares and your comments will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos. So I hope to see you all soon in the next video. Thank you for watching.